really feel that the queens are trying that hard. I was a little bit disappointed. This went from like a bad runway to a worse runway. Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest queen in the box. Y'all, if you are new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And actually, can you check that you're still subscribed if you already subscribed? Because I've been told that some people are getting unsubscribed by YouTube or something. And uh, girl, I need those followers. Today we are back in drag and back at it because we are playing my favorite game. Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 9, Episode 5, and let you know which looks are fab and fabulous and which ones are drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end where I will let you know who had my fabs and drabs of the week. This week's runway theme is Day to Night Reveal, where the queens must give us two looks in one. That is right, they must start off with a daytime look, which then transforms into a nighttime look. So, without further ado, let's find out which queens that shine bright and which ones faded into obscurity. First up, it's Nina West, and Nina West is coming out in this a giant nun costume with this giant hat. As she comes down, I immediately think of Sally Fields in The Flying Nun because the hat is so large, so oversized, and so camp, which is also Nina's personality. But the garment itself, isn't that great, but luckily she does not keep it on too long because she rips it off to get into this other dress that is more of a stained glass look. She's got the stained glass bodice with these giant hips and she's given this sort of like showgirl fantasy with all the colors coming into it. My initial thoughts was, ooh, I'm not sure because I like when you cannot tell a reveal will be coming. I think that makes it more fun. Of course, we all know a reveal is coming because that's the theme and this big giant black thing that was the nun costume, you can really tell that it was a little bit of a throwaway. And then I realized that the costume is so big because she's trying to hide those hips. And that's when I was like, I'm not sure how I feel about this because I feel like if you're gonna do that sort of reveal, then you probably should have a different style of costume underneath so that the reveal can look better. But then we find out she doesn't have one reveal, but she's got two because she pulls off her little hip pads to get into another dress. And now this dress has got a message on it, literally, and it says, God is a drag queen. So she decided to give you the full God story from none to stained glass, to God herself and I do appreciate Nina for her concept I do appreciate that she had a thread line all through them but once you start looking at the outfits they aren't that special the first one was nothing special it really looked like a cover-up the second one was slightly better I think it had a little bit too much going on but that's Nina for us and then she gets to this third one and it is a very simple dress with a message on it I'm not a huge fan of things that have words on them because it sometimes gets a little bit too literal. I wish she would have played up the God thing a little bit more, you know, maybe had a thorn of crowns, maybe, you know, maybe giving you God without saying the word God. I think that would have brought it up a notch. On top of it, RuPaul said it, and I'm gonna say it as well, I hate these shoes. When she comes out in the nun outfit, you see the shoes and I'm like, ugh, what is going on here? Then she reveals to the stained glass outfit and the shoes still don't match. And I'm like, girl, if you're gonna wear shoes like that, it better match with something. And it just makes me think that she probably couldn't find the shoes she wanted to wear and threw these on because that is the only logical explanation I can come up with because why would you choose these shoes? All in all, these outfits weren't great, but they weren't bad either. I do appreciate the storyline through them, and I do appreciate that she's given us three distinctive looks. And it is for all of those reasons, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a soft bow. Next up, we have Chanel, and Chanel is coming out in this a red top with this black skirt and this black briefcase. She pairs it with this big red hair to give you this whole red and black fantasy. Now, as she comes out, I'm thinking to myself, this definitely looks daytime realness. It actually looks so much like an outfit an actual woman would wear. And that's where I was like a little bit perplexed because I always say that I like my drag queens to look like drag queens. And this didn't look like a drag queen. It looked like a businesswoman's attire. 
But then I also thought to myself, I guess she did a good job imitating a businesswoman because that is who she was channeling. But what I really like about it is the way it reveals. She rips off the top and it becomes this long flowing dress. And I really enjoy that because it was so seamless. It was so hidden. You wouldn't necessarily know it was there if it wasn't done for this specific runway. Like had you seen this in a club or something like that, you would have actually been shocked because it's not a giant coat. It's not a gimmick. It really feels integrated. You can see that they really put some thought into it. Then as she reveals, we get into this evening gala look, which is still with the red, white, and black. And I do appreciate like the color line through it because her hair and everything match is perfectly with the dress as it did the other outfit it definitely feels like the girl who was wearing the first dress would be wearing the second dress if she was going to a gala it's giving me a little bit of Cruella de Vil and you know what I'm not really mad about it although not the most over the top this is really well done and it is definitely gonna get a buff. next up we got plastic tiara and plastic tiara is coming out with this purple traditional uh, Chinese dress with this uh, black hair that is a uh, super coiffed and elegant. Uh, she is definitely giving you like that geisha fantasy. As she comes out, I was a little bit disappointed, I know, because I immediately thought of her promo look. And actually the, her promo look had a lot of the same references. It had the same style of hair, just bigger. It had the same color and style of gown, but just much more elegant. So this one felt like a more basic version of her promo look. Now, that being said, this isn't a basic gown by any means of the imagination. It just felt basic because we've seen her do more in the same color palette, in the same style, in the same everything. So I was just like, mm, that really hurts. As she walks down the runway, she rips off her robe only to reveal this silver bodysuit. And I'm like, girl, not another bodysuit. She spins around just slightly and then you see it. This is not an ordinary bodysuit. This is like crafted to her body. It looks like molten lava that is just like all over her. It is definitely a little bit like chromatica, a little bit futuristic, a little bit AI. She is definitely giving you futuristic AI samurai and I am loving it. The thing is, Plastic Tiara knows she has a sexy body and knows the children will be living for it every time she shows it off. So she tries to show it off quite a lot. But what I do appreciate about it is that she could probably get away with doing a very simple bodysuit, but she goes, no, no, no. If I'm gonna do a bodysuit, it's gotta be at the same level as all my other stuff. And therefore she takes it up a notch. This outfit looks completely out of this world in the best way possible. It really looks like those AI things you see on Instagram, um, but that nobody really owns. I wouldn't be surprised if she took one of those images, went to a designer and she said, make me something like this. And they had to figure out how to do it. This made me go from a, it's a good outfit, but okay, to this is a freaking amazing outfit. I love every minute of it. Despite the storyline not necessarily being the strongest, I don't care. It is just that good and definitely going to be a bow. Next up, we have Roxy Andrews and Roxy Andrews is coming in with this sky blue coat. And by sky blue, I mean she's literally got the sky that is blue on her coat. She then paired it with this traditionally quaffed uh, hairstyle and immediately I am disappointed. Oh. As a reveal runway and as an all-stars reveal runway, she's coming out with a coat. I'm like, girl, do better. We've seen some amazing reveals on Drag Race in all of Drag Race history and you are supposed to be the all-stars. So I was expecting a lot more than a coat. As she comes down the runway, she opens up her coat to reveal this dress underneath. And she is literally going from day to night. She went from daytime to nighttime because this dress has got the night sky put on her. But that's not all. She then turns her jacket inside out and the jacket's got the night sky printed on the inside. So it is a reversible jacket. I do actually like the fact that she went literal with this outfit from day to night. I think that that was a cute play on the words and on the theme where she's revealing from one to the other. I really feel like that is really smart and plays into the theme because sometimes with especially with reveals, people don't stick to a theme and she did. So for that, I do appreciate. She goes on to explain that she made this herself and I'm like, you can kind of tell. 
Uh, I say that because neither of these silhouettes were particularly difficult or interesting, and it definitely felt hand-painted. It didn't feel like that extra level of artistry. Had she got someone else to make it, maybe an airbrush artist, I think that would have really taken it up a level. The one thing that is like sort of the saving grace of this outfit is this jacket that goes inside and outside. That is a really smart detail that I think just really works. The other thing that I'm not enjoying with this outfit is her hair. I think the style works with both outfits, so I think she's like very check with that one, but I don't like this color. Roxy definitely loves this blonde color, and I actually don't think this blonde hair color looks great on Roxy, but hey, that is her choice. But in this outfit, I definitely would have went black because she's wearing the black gloves. It would have matched with the black hair, and it would have given you a better look for nighttime. She could have also done blue, but Roxy doesn't do colored hair, so I think black would have just been stronger than the traditional blonde. All in all, it's not my favorite. It's not one that I'm really going to remember, and it's not one that I'm really going to talk about about and it is for those reasons I'm gonna go ahead and give her a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Gottmik, and Gottmik is coming out in a men's tailored suit. She said she is your basic normal man, and I think to myself, well, it's actually not that basic because that mug is stamped. But also the garment itself, although it's supposed to look basic, the way it is cut, it actually feels a little bit more like cool because it's almost like this oversized suit and maybe it's just the way she's wearing it but i was already like okay this is interesting where is this going i'm loving this is it gonna go mask femme that was my initial thought and then when she gets to the end of the runway she turns around to reveal that her back is completely filled with lingerie and the lingerie is sexy af and definitely giving you femme fatale my initial thought flashback to Lemon because she did this exact same thing on UK vs. The World 1, or at least she would have done it had she not been eliminated, but I am a big fan of Lemon and so therefore I follow her online, so I already recognize the reference. I mean, they could have had different references, let me be honest, but I saw that one first like two years ago, so when I saw this one, it was a little bit of a letdown. I was like, it's nothing new, I've seen it. But then I thought to myself, yeah, most people didn't see it. And then I thought to myself, this is done differently because it's got the lingerie and it's got that mask femme. So I was like, yeah, she took an idea, she made it her own and she delivered it in a high way. Was I expecting a lot more from Gottmik? Yes, I was. I was expecting much more of a reveal. I was definitely feeling like this suit was gonna rip off and something was gonna happen, not just a turnaround, you know what I mean? This is a reveal at the end of the day. It isn't a back to front look it is supposed to showcase something what i do appreciate is that you didn't necessarily see this coming i mean maybe if you are a big drag race fan like myself you you did see it coming but what i do mean is like it wasn't constructed in a way that you see this big thing that you know something is going to happen it was all sort of contained slim and you know more minimal even though i saw lemon do it first i can't criticize art that is well done and this is well done and that's why she's gonna get a bow. Next up, we have Georges, and Georges is coming out in this a white frilly dress with this big black hair and her purse. She is definitely giving you a rich girl going to Rodeo Drive, going shopping, because she is far too dressed up for the daytime and cares way too much what people think. But everybody knows one of those girls, and you definitely get a vibe, and a vibe she was giving. As she walks down the runway, she spins and the dress unravels to reveal this nighttime dancing dress. It is definitely giving you drag, honey. It is a typical dance drag costume with all the sparkles and all the rhinestones. It is glittering, it is fabulous, it is definitely a look. And so, first up, I will say I love the way that this undid, this spinning reveal. I thought that was really cute, really fun. It added a little bit of theater to the runway, which we really love. But then when I look at each of the looks, looks individually, I'm a little bit perplexed. First, I will say that the first look I did not enjoy at all. I don't like this silhouette. I don't think it is particularly flattering on Georges. Georges is a tiny person, so it doesn't take much fabric to really swallow her up. And I do feel like this swallowed her up, but more importantly, I just don't like the, the silhouette. 
as she unravels, you get to the second costume, and the second costume looks good, but nothing that I haven't seen already. I've seen probably 10 million versions of this. Is this a very nice, well-made one? Yeah, of course it is, um, but it is not that next level I've come to expect from All Stars. But the one thing that she is going for her is it doesn't look crafty, it doesn't look cheap, it definitely feels like she thought about it and put it together. So although not really interesting, it's also not really bad. And because it's not really bad, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a soft five. Next up is Angeria Paris Van Michaels. And Angeria is coming out with this dress that is a mix and match pattern. She's got on this dress, or maybe it's a top and skirt, where the top part has got this sequence of fabric. The skirt is like this typical A-line skirt in this African pattern. She's then got one sleeve that is full fur, and she's got a giant hair which is wrapped in a turban. As she walks down the runway, she undoes her dress and it becomes a long dress. Really? This is where we're at? Uh, this went from like a bad runway to a worse runway. I was already not loving most of these looks and I was like barely fabbing them. And then this comes out and I'm like, this is the most minimal effort dress I have ever seen. It is just like a short dress to a long dress. And I'm like, how did you make it on All Stars if this is what you're giving me? I was expecting so much more. Now I do like the short dress to a long dress. I'm not gonna take that away from her. But like I said, I was expecting more. So I was expecting this sleeve that was fur to come off and then she would have had maybe like a flowing sleeve. I was expecting this headpiece to come off and then have like maybe short hair underneath. And I say that because these pieces were so big, like the headpiece was so big and she had the turban around it, so I thought she was hiding a wig underneath it. But no, she just kept it as is. And this first sleeve did not make sense to me, so again, I thought it was gonna come off to give you more silhouettes. But when none of that changed, I was so, so disappointed. All in all, I don't have a lot of great things to say about this look, and I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Miss Vanjie, and Miss Vanjie is coming out wearing this white dress with this black hat, and she is carrying her shopping bag. If you didn't figure it out, in the first five seconds, she is channeling Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman. I immediately got the reference, and I love that Vanjie went in this direction, because it is definitely giving me a little bit of that Coco Chanel vibes, and this is not what we're used to seeing with Vanjie. Vanjie likes to go a little bit ghetto, a little bit hood with her drag, so to see her all glammed up, I was like loving every minute of it because she looks stunning. I was really curious how this was gonna turn into a reveal because everything was so form-fitting and I was like, I'm very interested in how it reveals. As she gets down to the end of the runway, she just rips off her dress and it becomes another dress. I will say the way it revealed was not fantastic. Actually, I was disappointed. I was really hoping something would happen. There would be a little bit more theater to it. And this definitely didn't feel very theatrical. For a second look, she reveals into this a red dress with these white gloves. And she is yet again channeling Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman a little bit later in the movie. And I'm like, yes concept. I love it. I love that she went from literally Pretty Woman Daytime to literally Pretty Woman Nighttime. I love that there's a cohesion in it, and I like that both looks look expensive. And it's coming from Vanji, who doesn't necessarily do this stereotypical beauty. She likes to give it a little bit more oomph, so it was also surprising for me, and that's what I really appreciated. She checked all the boxes. Honestly, this would have almost gotten a perfect score had it not been for the way it revealed, which I thought was a little bit disappointing. All in all, I love this look and it is definitely gonna be a bow. And that is it for this week's runway. Y'all, I was so disappointed by this episode, by this reveal. We've seen so many amazing reveals on Drag Race and this one was just not it. And this is supposed to be All Stars 9 and they had budget. This is where I'm starting to think that maybe this non-elimination version is really hindering some of the 
fashion that we're seeing because I don't necessarily feel that the queens are trying that hard. Right now I'm watching All Stars 9, but I'm actually more interested in Drag Race France, which I will be releasing a video on Drag Race France very shortly, so keep your eyes out. But enough about that, let's get into the real reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week goes to... Angeria oh. Paris Van Michaels. Oh my god, I don't think this was that much of a surprise. I gave her a one star. I feel like she didn't do enough for this week. It just was like a no all around. And I don't I don't know what it is about Angie, but she goes from high highs to low lows. So the girl's gotta get her in order. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week has to go to Tiara. Honestly, uh, this was a no-brainer for me. Um, I loved both looks, but particularly the one underneath was really next level. It felt original. It felt all-stars level. And that is it for me. But I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with my thoughts. Who did you have as your fabs and drabs of the week? I do read all of them and reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.